thank you. Yes, uh, uh, the Article 41 that deals with ministerial accountability states that a minister, a cabinet minister, must provide answers. Maybe I must make that very clear. Now, last week, when I asked questions to Corporal Phineas, or Minister of Defense, he refused completely no, no, to answer. No, no. no now, the question is, the question is, the Auditor General made a claim that over 500 million was investigated, but when the minister was the accounting officer at the Ministry of Defense, he refused to answer completely. Okay, let's and take the he question. Also, no, I'm not done. Yeah. Yesterday, when people were asking, you did not stop them. Please, don't stop me. Okay, please. Yes, so that I'm done, so that the corporal okay, can get please the information. Please, go ahead. Now, now, <laughs> as the minister now, because you chased away the Auditor General that time, what is your response to that? What action did you take to address this matter of the looting at August 26 and other related matters? Okay, let the I minister hope the please respond. Will answer. Thank you. Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. I want to be on record, Honourable Speaker. What is today's date? Man? On 17, 16. 16 September mm. 2020, I want to go on record, God forbid, but what I'm sensing every time I hear yeah. Vilho Hafeni speaking is that this man will be killing men in Namibia. Yeah. God forbid, because the posture yeah. of this man most dangerous projects the deepest sense of readiness to institute a military coup as well as to eliminate yes. Yes. a so huge section of Namibia. No and they thought, Mugabe thought this was not going to happen until it happened. Yes. I'm saying, I'm going, I'm asking you to put me on record and I, and I place myself on record. I'm seeing red signs coming. And I know he's related to Nicanor, and they are related to the Mushalengas and so on, and they are related to the Helmut Angulas and so on. I see red flags coming. Yeah. That having been said, Honorable Speaker, no member of parliament would want strategic and tactical defense capabilities of their country to be discussed, discussed willy-nilly, never. That would be irresponsible whether you are opposition or wherever you are. Yes. The defense capabilities of a country is first its pride, because it finances it, and secondly, must be protected to ensure that the country's defense capabilities also has the full capability to defend territorial sovereignty and integrity. Mm -hmm. The difficulty that we see now is that the guns are turned consistently inward, as happened in Zimbabwe, yes. towards citizens. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's good that others on that side may be blind, but when the cannon turns and the neighbor's house is blasted by a cannon, your house is also not immune. Mm -hmm. Defense capabilities are not just to be protected by those that serve. At the same time, while it is not just their responsibility to protect the defense and, and information that is part of the strategic capability and arsenal of a, of a military, those that are working there must also ensure that there is internal peace and cohesion. Just last week, Saturday, an overheroic speaking Namibian person came to me who has served for 20 years in the defense force, yes. stating that if you do not grant sexual favors to those commanders, not all, some, your chances of promotion are near zero. She has been imprisoned, they couldn't prosecute anymore, and they have been sidelining her. I have her name, but for security reasons, I cannot mention. The same person has also alleged that there is a very clear ethnic approach to promotion. Very clear approach that if you speak languages that are different from Vilho, then 
you are not promoted. Yes. This is what people in the defense forces are saying. I'm, I'm saying this, Honorable Speaker, that perhaps the threat to the defense force does not come from some unarticulated foreign threat. It comes from within. Yes. From people in the army who are dissatisfied with the tribal concoction that for 30 years has defined the military of Namibia. I so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable um, uh, uh, two quick comments to that. Um, um, I think in any given society, we have particular challenges, bad apples, and, and I underline the fact that the source who spoke to you said some. There are some, which is very Im important to un underscore. But I, I also, as leaders, honestly, on a serious note, it's a pity that we face this particular pandemic and we are not able to interact as we normally used to do. Sit down together, sharing together, the kind of information you are raising there must find a way into the system to ensure that some of those challenges are actually taken care of. Uh, so I just wanted to put it on record that when things improve, I think we need to do more as lawmakers to interact with each other in order to be able to talk to each other. After all, it is, this is the country that belongs to all of us and together, working together, definitely we can improve on some of those particular challenges.